Hello, I'm Brian Noble, CEO of Family Policy Institute of Washington. Hi, and I'm Brad Payne, president of FPIW Action. A couple of disclaimers today before we get started. Nothing in this video is an endorsement of the candidate, nor the candidate's endorsement of FPIW or FPIW Action. It's simply a public service to meet and greet the candidate. All right. Well, Mike, good morning. Glad to have you with us. Thank you, Brad. It's glad to be, I mean, I'm glad to be back with you. It's good to be here with you and Brian. All right. Well, my my first question will sound similar. It's kind of a three-parter. If you would give us your name and the position you're running for, tell us a little bit about you and your family, and then tell us about your experience for this position. Thank you. So Maya Espinoza, candidate for state Senate here in the 28th legislative district. So that's Stillicum, DuPont, Lakewood, um, the 253 uh, between JBLM, some of Spanaway, um, not in, not much of Tacoma, and we go about as far as south as uh, Lacey. So this area has historically been a very purple, you know, bipartisan district this year. It's solidly one party. You can imagine which party that is um, in Washington state here. And so part of the reason that I decided to run, you know, despite having small kids at home still, is that our state is in dire Streets, we're in trouble, um, and so you know, really to protect my family and make sure that Washington State is a viable place to continue to raise our family. Um, my husband and I decided that I should run for this. Um, I've run for state superintendent of public instruction again, you know, very much because of my family, um, and then I ran for uh, the state legislature in 2018 for the same district. Um, at that time, I was looking to bring more balance to Olympia. We were close in 2018, and unfortunately, we've backslid quite a ways since then. So first and foremost, I'm a mom of four kids. I have two big kids, two littles. Um, and so it, it's uh, not like total madness at home when you have two helpers and then two little <laughs> dolls to play dress up with. And of course, uh, needless to say, a very supportive husband, which uh, you know, like this morning, I had a 7 a.m. meeting, but he was getting the kids breakfast and packing lunches and getting them off to school. Um, so I, you know, could not do this without the support of my family. Um, and I'm a small business owner, so I get to work from home, uh, which is wonderful with the family. Um, and my experience, I've actually worked in the legislature. I've worked for the governor's commission, um, the Commission on Hispanic Affairs. And actually in that role in particular, I was able to take pieces of legislation that I thought you know, might be amenable to both parties, let's say. And I was able to kind of shop the ideas around and find out, you know, what motivates people, what's, you know, something that would prevent something from getting through. And I found this real ability to bring people together on ideas that made sense if we could get through, you know, why they wouldn't work or wouldn't make sense. And that's really what I hope to bring to the legislature. Certainly, if elected as a Republican in this sort of makeup, you know, you're in the deep minority here, but people do, you know, want ideas that work. And so I hope to help bring some of those ideas forward and bring them forward in a bipartisan, constructive way, because deep down, you know, I, I truly want to believe that everybody in office, you know, wants to serve as, as a public servant. And so if I can help facilitate some of that and make our state a better place to live, that's what I'm here for. What is your primary promise to the public if you are elected? So my promise, and this was reinforced this past weekend in a uh, candidate forum that I did, is that I will stand my ground. Um, I, you know, stand firmly in my faith, in my family, and what I believe in. Um, and I promise, you know, that that's not going to change. But, you know, what are solutions that we can do in Washington state that that might look you know, not pre preferable, you know, as something that I would have crafted, let's say, but I promise, you know, that I will stand um, firm in my beliefs and our shared values and bring that forward and and hopefully, you know, convince others along the way. I, I hope that, you know, if nothing else, I serve as an inspiration to others that, you know, think similarly or believe similarly, but maybe have lost faith because, um, you know, the, the ones that are vocal or the ones that, you know, let's say have the microphone and have the power right now, um, don't, don't really align with our, our values. And so my promise is that I will, you know, stay true to our values and do everything that I can to bring people together so that we can move forward in our shared values. Maya, what do you feel like differentiates you the most from your opponent? 
So one of the things that I think is particularly relevant to this audience uh, with the Family Policy Institute um, is the belief that parents should have a say in their kids' education, in their kids' upbringing. Um, you know, this kind of harkens back to do your children belong to you or do they belong to all of society or the state? And that, I think, is is a pretty scary thought, you know, to think that our kids are commodities or, you know, up for grabs. Our children are precious. There's no one, you know, that's more responsible for the child than the parent. And so what really sets me and my opponent apart is, you know, she, for example, um, voted to ban parents from curriculum decisions, you know, and she's a school board member. So this is particularly, you know, damning, um, knowing that she deals with parents on a, on almost a daily basis um, who probably do have rightly concerns. Um, the school district that she works in is the one that um, started or, or was the first to implement the flash curriculum. Uh, so, of course, one of my motivations in running um, for state superintendent is, you know, this is on the heels of a comprehensive sex ed decision, which started sex ed discussions in kindergarten for kids. You know, there's nothing age appropriate about sex ed in kindergarten. Um, there's nothing, you know, there's no reason that we should be um, having these conversations sooner. And there are certainly, you know, sensitive subjects that need to be discussed with parents. And those are the curriculum decisions that do need to be made, you know, at, at the school board level. And so to, you know, have this position that parents should not have a say, I think is, again, just a real strong point of differentiation between me and my opponent. And, you know, that reigns true in a lot of things. She she tends to, um, you know, think she knows best and not want to deal with people who, who uh, you know, would contradict that or think otherwise. Um, you know, one of the examples I used this last week was that she um, voted to increase uh, the property tax uh, rate lid from 1% to 3%, so a triple, you know, increase in property taxes. Um, and in fact, she didn't vote for it. She co-sponsored it, um, you know, but uh, she said that she took her name off of it because she she listened, you know, to her constituents. Well, unfortunately, you know, it was her bad idea in the first place, and it could have very well passed. You know, this was something I don't think she took her name off, you know, because uh, she listened. I think it was because there was a lot of backlash coming and she had a difficult election ahead. Our fourth and final question is, what did you learn in the primary campaign that positively impacted you during this general election? Yeah, so actually, it's kind of double edged. But what I learned was that um, Democrats are not concerned about this race. They're not concerned about this district. They think it's in the bag and they are advancing a supermajority effort by taking on new districts. So they think they can win in central Washington, where they literally gerrymandered a Democrat district in the middle of central Washington. Um, they think that they can win in the Bainbridge Island area, where there's a um, uh, an incumbent Republican they are not spending money in this district. And that, I think, is positive. Um, there's a separation between how the House candidates performed and how I performed. And that shows that the gal that I'm running against is particularly vulnerable. We certainly think that we can take that seat back. And frankly, it's necessary if we want to prevent a supermajority, which means the power to change the Constitution without a vote of the people, without any check on authority. I mean, if we really, you know, didn't think it could get worse in Washington state, it's about to if we don't catch them right now. Well, Maya, thank you so much for your time and thank you for so eloquently sharing your thoughts with our listeners. We appreciate that and wish you much luck in the next couple of weeks as oh, we well. run the campaign. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thanks for doing these. It's so important that we get the word out. And so, you know, every little bit helps. This is the final weeks and we are, you know, my campaign was set up to kind of run out of steam at the end rather than have money left over. So right now we're trying to throw everything in the tank while we've still got it. So vote early, please donate if you still can and prayers absolutely needed and welcome. So thank you to you, Brian and Brad. Amen. Well, I'm Brad Payne with FPIW Action. And I'm Brian Noble with FPIW. For the reminder, nothing in this video is considered an endorsement of the candidate, nor the candidate's endorsement of FPIW or FPIW Action. Like we like to say around here, go out there and defend in advance biblical values in the public square. God bless.